It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Oakville. Thank you. Good morning, Speaker. On our last day of the Legislature before the summer session, in between Toronto and Hamilton, Oakville is a hidden gem, rich in history, vibrant with natural beauty, and bursting with adventure. As summer approaches, I rise in this House to highlight some exciting events taking place in my community over the summer. Every Friday is Jazz Night in the summer from 7 to 9 p.m. in Town Square in downtown Oakville. This Sunday, June 11th, the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton annual spring concert is being held at the Queen Elizabeth Community Cultural Centre. After four long years, the annual Mayor's Picnic is back, taking place on Sunday, June 11th from 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. at Lakeside Park. It will be an afternoon filled with lots of fun, family fun things to do, including face painting, children's games, balloons, and new this year, a model train setup. The 2023 Oakville Film Festival is running from June 21st to 27th, celebrating a decade of diverse cinema. The festival has showcased hundreds of films of all genres, appealing to a wide range of audiences. Canada Day returns to Bronte Heritage Waterfront Park on July 1st. Enjoy an evening of free performances, family fun, and of course, fireworks. And be sure to mark your calendars for the last weekend in July, July 28th to 30th, as Oakville's largest outdoor event comes back with the Oakville annual family rib fest at beautiful Sheridan College. Speaker, I invite everyone to bring their families and for a vacation staycation in beautiful Oakville this summer. I wish everyone all the best for a great summer. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for London Fanshawe. Speaker, as the school year comes to close, I'd like to reflect on a recurring issue in my office has heard from parents, teachers, school board staff that issue, staffing and resource shortages in our schools. Recently, my office heard from a mom whose child is struggling with bullying issue at school. Jacob is a first grader and is facing problems with another first grader. The mother has tried various avenues for resolution, but the crux of the issue appears to be lack of support in the classroom and a systemic EA shortage. Jacob is hurt physically and emotionally. He is confused and afraid. I can't speak for the other child in this case, but I would assume he also feels forgotten and in need of support. I have also heard from representatives of our local school board, and they have identified the same issues with staffing shortages. The Thames Valley District School Board reported a 5.4 million increase in expenses for special education for the coming year, leaving them with a 3.4 million deficit for special education expenses alone. And there all other deficits across the board for operating costs. The Independent Financial Accountability Officer recently revealed that the government withheld $844 million embark, em, earmarked for education at a time when school boards are facing significant funding deficits. The government needs to provide proper funding now and ensure appropriate staff levels at schools across the province so children like Jacob are not left behind. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener, South Hesper. Thank you, Speaker. When it comes to uh, member statements, I generally wait for the uh, spirit to move me about what I'm going to talk about. Yesterday, I was in estimates, and uh, the Attorney General was speaking about uh, bail vetters and uh, intensive bail supervision, and it had me thinking about being a Crown attorney, being a Crown prosecutor. And to be honest, it made me feel rather sad and maudlin. Um, I, when I was a Crown, I, I viewed it very much as a, a, almost a calling, uh, an, an honour, and I thought, we haven't had a, uh, a, a shout-out for Crown attorneys uh, in this chamber recently. And when it comes to the, uh, the legal profession and the, the profession of being a Crown, there, there really is nobody else that, that deserves it to the extent that Crown attorneys do. I've described Crowns as being the first responders of the legal world. When we talk about um, you know, fire, police, paramedics, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of conversation about the trauma they see, PTSD, um, but uh, the, the Crowns don't get that. Um, crowns have to see terrible images. They have to deal with human suffering uh, every single day. They deal with it in a very personal and direct fashion. They are some of the hardest working people I know. It's a job that never ends. I say with, with doctors, at least nobody expects you to operate at home on your kitchen table at 2 o'clock in the morning, but with crowns, they do. And uh, increasingly, 
in, in today's justice system, we're the ones that are having to explain to people why justice doesn't look the way they thought, why being a victim doesn't feel the way they thought, and the pressure that that puts on you is incredible. So I want to thank all of the Crown prosecutors out there that are doing an incredible job. Excellent. Member Statements. The member for Parkdale, High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Minden's local hospital closed on June 1st due to staffing shortage and despite overwhelming opposition from the local community. Minden is far from alone. Lanark County, Guelph, Hamilton, Perth, Grand River, Windsor, Alexandria, Wingham, Thessalon, Kemptville, Seaforth, Ottawa, Bowmanville, Clinton, Orangeville, Carlton Place, Essex County, Kingston, Waterloo, Credit Valley, Smith Falls, London, Chesley, Fort Erie, Port Colborne, all communities that have seen either no ambulances available or the closure of hospital services in the last year due to staffing shortages. The staffing crisis continues in our health care system, and the government still refuses to repeal Bill 124 that suppresses the wages of health care workers. At the same time, staffing agencies like the Canadian Health Labs are convincing hundreds of health care workers to leave their workplaces by offering them double the salaries they normally earn. The company made $154 million from just 500 nurses and PSWs they hired out of our public health systems. Their plan is to hire as many as 5,000 people. These agencies take healthcare workers out from the public system and sell them back at huge profits. This is systemic destruction of our public healthcare system and we, the public, end paying way more for declining services. Speaker, I can only think this is happening due to the conservative agenda to undermine public health care system because no one can be so incompetent to not see the damages these policies are creating. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Speaker, and uh, last month I had the sincere privilege of joining the Association of Consulting Engineering Companies who hosted the Ontario Engineering Project Awards, the 20th. Uh, holding of that event, and I'm very proud to recognize a winner from my riding of Windsor to come see. This, it was the Sewer and Coastal Flooding Protection Master Plan. Uh, so it's certainly a privilege to join Stacey McGuire, Ryan Langlois, and Laura Hurley of Dillon Consulting and the City of Windsor as they accepted the award. And also recognized were BBA's Great Adventure Onboarding Program, Tolk Engineering's Hockey Night in Huntsville, Dillon's Collins Creek Wildlife Mitigation Project, Lee Consulting's Water Management Plan by Site 46X0176BO, Hatches Process Gas Project, the Particulate Emissions Project, P uh, Sudbury Smelter, and this one was led by my former classmate from U Ottawa, Benoit Payet. Intuitive for its Portland Bridges Project, Aramosa Engineering for its Mine Remediation Cloud Skate Integration, JL Richards for its Manatec Water Main Link Phase 1 and North Island Water Main Link, Hatch for the Kingston Third Crossing, Aramosa Engineering's Electrical Power Studies and Arc Flash Models for Multiple Wastewater Facilities, McIntosh Perry for the Ducks Unlimited uh, Project Inspections for 250 sites in Ontario, RV Anderson for Central Bridge Placement and Additional Works, and RJ Burnside for the Goatee Water Supply Project and ACOM Canada for the Ontario Line Immersive Sound Studio. To all my engineering colleagues who are awardees this year, thank you. You've made our profession proud. Thank you very much. Member's statements. The member for Toronto St. Paul. Good morning, Speaker. It feels really good to be here in the legislature today. My mother has been hospitalized for almost two months, and I've been able to be right by her side. I promised I wouldn't cry. Um, as her primary caregiver, thanks to the support of the leader of the official opposition and my Ontario NDP colleagues, thank you. I want to thank my staff for their support, as well as other staff who have reached out. I want to thank other mem members, including government members, who also shared their concern. Um, I won't ever forget it. Over the last several weeks, my mother has been cared for by dozens of hardworking doctors, specialists, nurses, OT, PT, and PSWs. I can't thank them enough. Only about 10 days ago, after hundreds of vials of blood work, tests, consultations, two biopsies, we got a diagnosis. Neurosarcoidosis, a rare autoimmune-related multisystemic disease that involves inflammation of the brain, spinal cord, meninges, cranial and peripheral nerves, 
It attacks the central nervous system. This disease has no cure, but remission might be possible. Speaker, I have seen it ravage my mother's body and brain and mind and strip her of her independence, but she is a fighter. And thank you, thank you to the speaker for giving me a few extra moments. The treatment for this disease is incredibly difficult on the body with its own laundry list of complications, some of which can be life-threatening. I want to thank countless constituents in my community of St. Paul's across party lines for their love and support, phone calls and text messages. I especially want to show gratitude to our local faith leaders and many congregation members at St. Michael and All Angels, St. Matthew's Holy Blossom, Verity Center for Better Living, previous pastors from MCC Toronto, and right here at the legislature, Charlie the Chaplain, for their consistent <laughs> shoulder, for their consistent shoulder and faith when I've had none. To my chosen family, family members, dear former caucus members and education colleagues and friends, my mom's friends, thank you. To my partner, Aisha, thank you for being my rock. Speaker, to all of the members of the House, I don't know what our future holds, but my mom and I are so lucky to have experienced all this compassion during this unbearable time, and I cannot thank you all enough. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you, Speaker. And obviously, our hearts and our best wishes go out to the member of Toronto St. Paul's for her and her family, and we wish her all the very best. Um, it's a pleasure to rise and share a wonderful local event in my riding with the legislature this morning. Speaker, the Rosie Rhubarb Festival begins this weekend in the lovely town of Shedden, Ontario. The Rosie Rhubarb Festival was founded over 25 years ago to promote the small town community of Shedden and raise money for a new community centre. The festival is always held the second weekend of June when the rhubarb ripens and is ready to become tasty treats for all to enjoy. Speaker, to date, the festival has raised over $1.2 million to help support local community initiatives, including a local community centre. These funds have been used to construct a picnic pavilion, purchase playground equipment and build a new library in the village. It is enjoyable to see Shedden come together for some good old-fashioned country fun at the start of every summer. Vendors, artisans, food trucks and businesses fill the fairgrounds. All have fun. Rhubarb baking contests, country music dancing, face painting, petting zoos and the Sunday car show are all part of the festivities. However, Speaker, the best part is obviously tasting the renowned rhubarb pies and rhubarb sauce with ice cream. I invite all members of this House, along with your families, to attend the festival this weekend and enjoy the sights, sounds and taste of southwestern Ontario. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Critical metals like cobalt, lithium and nickel go into batteries. Rare earths like dysprosium, neodymium or praseodymium go into electric vehicle motors and wind turbines. Recycling these critical materials is a strategy which would give Ontario workers a shortcut into the value chain between the mine and EV. Right now, rare earths mining and processing is led by China, which also dominates in other critical minerals such as graphite. Australia and South America are leading sources of lithium. Indonesia leads in nickel, but much of this is controlled by Chinese companies as well. In the future, for economic, environmental and security reasons, a circular economy must develop for critical materials. Today, production of critical metals and rare earths involves value-added work in chemical processing, and it is performed offshore. However, Ontario is amongst the global leaders in technology to recycle critical metals and minerals. To, to maximize the economic benefit to you and me of EV and battery production in Ontario, production for which the federal and Ontario governments have agreed to pay dearly, I believe 
we must be a first mover and leader in the cyclic economy for critical materials. This means supporting the ecosystem around critical minerals processing and recycling before other regions in North America begin to dominate. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as the 43rd Parliament rises for the summer, I'd like to acknowledge my fellow MPPs on both sides of the House for your continued dedication to your constituents and connecting with them over the summer months. Mr. Speaker, as we look forward to a season full of family gatherings, graduations, vacations and day trips to some of the most beautiful destinations in Ontario, I invite you to visit my riding of Lanark Frontenac Kingston. From hiking the trails to taking the live music at one of the world-famous festivals, there is something for all ages. Enjoy cultural events like the Spirit of the Drum powwow this Saturday and Sunday in Smith Falls. Experience one of our festivals, like the world-renowned Stuart Park Festival in Perth, Puppets Up in Elmont, the Sydenham Lakes and Trails Festival, and the Blue Skies Music Festival in Clarendon, just to name a few. Families will enjoy our many fairs in Lombardy, Carlton Place, Pakenham, Mississippi Mills, Smith Falls, Perth, and many others. Experience canoeing or kayaking along the natural water waterways in Lanark and Frontenac counties and take in a pristine protected wilderness. Or travel the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Rideau Canal, which passes through Perth, Smith Falls, and many other towns from Ottawa to Kingston. Mr. Speaker, I wish everyone a safe, happy, and healthy summer. And if you're thinking about a day trip or a multi-day adventure, remember there is much to do and see in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Still one more member statement. Member statements. The member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to inform this House that in my riding of Durham, the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and thriving. I've had the pleasure to attend some grand openings and reopenings for small businesses over the past few months. In Port Perry, I had the opportunity to meet with Stacey Burns and her team for the grand reopening of Ocala Winery. In Bowmanville, I proudly joined Amanda Green in cutting the red ribbon to open her dream business, Exquisite Lashing Company. Amanda acknowledged that our government's cutting of red tape and regulations helped make her business dream a reality. One block west of my office in downtown Bowmanville, Carmela and George Mangus just opened Sugar Dust Sweets and Cafe, delighting their customers with elegant cakes, sweet treats, and delicious lunches. Earlier this month, earlier this month Mr. Speaker, one of the youngest franchisees for Firehouse Subs, Jasmine Nellis, opened her second franchise in West Curtis to a sellout crowd. Like many successful entrepreneurs across Ontario, my constituents are expanding their businesses, creating jobs, because our government is getting it done by reducing red tape, regulation, and creating an environment for growth and prosperity. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all members of this House, I want to congratulate all the small businesses of Durham. Keep up the great work. Let's grow together. Let's make Ontario strong. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.